Okay, welcome back to uh, microeconomics. Uh, we're going to do chapter four. We're going to cover economic efficiency, government price setting, and taxes. First thing we want to talk about is economic surplus, or what we just call surplus. There are two sides to that. Uh, we'll talk about consumer surplus and producer surplus. Uh, let's assume that we've uh, conducted a little survey here in um, in town, and we've asked consumers what the highest price they would be willing to pay for a pizza. And we find that Austin, Brittany, Carl, and Dwayne and Ed have varying values that they place on pizza, ranging from Ed at $6 up to $10 for Austin. We're uh, going to plot these um, values on a chart, and we'll just show Austin at $10, Brittany at 9 Carl, Dwayne, and Ed. So now the question is, is what if the pizzas were priced at $5 a piece? How could we calculate consumer surplus? Once again, consumer surplus is simply the difference between what individuals are willing to uh, pay, the highest price they're willing to pay, and what the actual price is, or their value versus the price. In the case of each one of these um, customers, we can uh, note that that area re is represented by the green area of the chart. Uh, if we tabled that, uh, we would just note the difference, the highest price willing to pay, uh, subtract the price, would yield the consumer surplus. So in Austin's case, he was willing to pay $10. Uh, the price was only $5, so his consumer surplus is 5 and so forth. Uh, we summarize that at the bottom, uh, showing that the total uh, highest price willing to pay was $40. The price actually ended up being $25 for all five customers. So the consumer surplus uh, was calculated at $15. So take a look at that again. And let's assume the price goes up to $750. What would happen in this market? Well, we note now that the consumer surplus has actually been reduced for Austin, Brittany, and Carl. What would uh, Ed and Dwayne be doing at a price of 750? If you said they would not be participating in the market, that would be correct. The price is actually above the value, therefore they would not buy a pizza. Does this make sense? Very good. All right, so let's. Um, once again, look at the new revised table at a 750 price and calculate the consumer surplus. So here's a question for you. What would Ed and Dwayne be doing? Right, if they, uh, the price is actually above their willingness to pay, they would be out of the game. So we would not calculate them in our calculation for overall consumer surplus, we would just be adding up the consumer surplus from Austin, Brittany, and Carl, and that would give us 20, uh, $27 total, and uh, the price would be $22.50 for three pizzas, so the consumer surplus would be $4.50. All right, so we can uh, simply take this, uh, the individual um, demand curve and uh, convert that from a column chart to a line and eliminate the line and simplify the um, data in this way. All right, let's shift gears a little bit and look at the supply side for pizza. Uh, what we've done here is we've interviewed five different pizza restaurants and asked them what their cost for pizza would be. And the first restaurants indicated that their price or their cost was a three dollar, three dollar cost. The second was four, five, six, and seven, and so forth. We can take that data and actually put it on a graph. And we note, we note this. At a five dollar price, the question would be, how many pizzas would be provided into that market? Well, we note here that only two restaurants uh, are actually indicating a producer surplus. Restaurant, restaurant one, or the first restaurant, would have a $2 surplus, and restaurant two would have no surplus. Excuse me, restaurant two would have $1 surplus, and restaurant three would have no surplus. 
at that $5 price once again. All right, there's a table for that. So the question would be, would ha how many firms would actually participate in that market? Remember, the equation is uh, the firms will continue to participate up to the point where marginal costs equal marginal benefits. In this case, we would just have three firms. So firms four and five would not participate in the market. And why not? Because their costs are actually greater than the price. So we can calculate the producer surplus side of the equation, simply adding up the total costs and the prices and the producer surplus. And we would see here that we would generate $3 in producer surplus for that market. All right.